Hi, it's Ash and Bean Swenglish, and I've just invested in solar. It's something that everyone seems to be doing around here. And you know what? I remember probably 30 years ago, back then solar panels were only for the, the rich and the wealthy, and they didn't really return on their investment for maybe 20, 25 years, and they cost a fortune. But the prices have come right down now, and that means, of course, the return on investment has as well. Plus, the technology's moved a long way in a, a short amount of time. Now it seems that if you put enough panels on your roof, you might be able to get a return on investment within about five years. Plus, there's the long-term aspect that really appealed to me, which is adding value to the house. I actually did a poll in the Being Swanglish group to check whether this is a, a real fact or not. And as you can see, the majority of the people voted that, yep, they see it as a value add. With that in mind, and also trying to be a bit more green, I decided to go for it. And so I started looking. Now I'm based in Sweden and there's a big market for solar here. There's also a lot of cowboys on the market or so it seems. And so you need to do a ton of research. Now I joined one of the biggest Facebook groups and that's been a really interesting experience because on a daily basis, I get to see the pros, the cons, the problems, the benefits, the moaning, of course, as well. But it's all really good and interesting, and it's given me a really good insight. It's also helped to educate me a bit. Now, you can't always believe everything that you see on Facebook, and there are a lot of salesmen in these groups as well. I've received numerous messages privately after stating in the group in a post that I'm interested in solar. You just gotta disregard those, really, and you've gotta cut the crap and look at the facts. And that's what I've been trying my best to do, but I'm new to all of this. When I first got some quotes from some of the biggest companies in the area, and it does depend on where you are based in Sweden as to which company has the best reputation, you'll see a lot of different comments when I first started posting the quotations I was receiving. I'd post them and people would say, ah, too expensive. And I'd be like, well, what can I, where can I get this cheaper? Oh, look at, ABC Solar, for example, some company I'd never heard of, some two, three, one-man band that might be gone in a year's time, and then you're left with no warranty, no guarantee. You might have the hardware or equipment warranty, but you won't have any service warranty to actually get on the roof and replace stuff. So I wanted to avoid these tiny companies, and that does sometimes mean paying a bit of a premium, but I think that's worth it when you're spending almost 100,000 Swedish about £8,000 on something that's going to add value to your house and hopefully not give you a lot of problems over the years. It's quite ironic, actually, that one of the comments I got in response is, it's too expensive, you can get it cheaper elsewhere. And when I looked at this guy's profile to see where he worked, his ex-company that he worked for was a solar company, who, guess what, went bust. So my advice, avoid the smaller companies. You might actually get a great deal with them, and there might be some brilliant small companies out there. But these small companies come and go, unfortunately. The other thing to check very carefully is when you do get a quote, look at the equipment being quoted because there are some really cheap solar panels. You can buy solar panels on Timu and sites like that. I definitely would not want those on my roof because they're probably not gonna last 25 years. You'll probably be lucky if you get 25 months out of some of them. Now, there, there are some great budget brands. There's some great budget cars, but the support network for budget cars is not big just as the support network for budget equipment isn't big either. So I wanted the best brands, the best equipment that I could get that's gonna not blow up on me, not gonna set my house on fire. Look carefully at the quote, make sure the equipment is good equipment, good manufacturer with good long warranties. So some of the bigger companies that I approached really didn't seem to care about me. I asked for a quote, they didn't even come out. They just said, yep, bang, there's your quote. Goodbye, and didn't follow up. They didn't make any more contact. Now, that might be a great company to work with, but I do not want that kind of experience once I've handed over my money and I can't contact anyone or they don't bother calling me back when there's a problem. I then went with a company called Cessol, and they seemed pretty good. They sent a surveyor or a sales guy out literally almost that day or the next day. And he seemed really friendly and he looked at the house. He spent a lot of time analyzing it and looking at what he would propose for the, the setup here. Because what you want to make sure as well is that your panel configuration or the overall setup is going to actually cover your energy usage. Now, we use about 10,000 kilowatt hours per year. And 
On my roof, which is south facing, I'm able to get 13 panels, which equates to about 6 kWp, which is I think kilowatt peak produ production, which is basically going to cover 60% of my annual power usage. But on top of that, what I really liked about Sesol and also one of the other companies, Sphere Solar, they both offer a battery balancing service where they basically give you a battery which is not only used for your personal consumption, so any power generated from the panels gets stored on the battery and then you use that power at night, but also it's used for balancing the grid, the electrical grid. Apparently Sweden has one of the worst electrical grids in Europe. And because of that, they don't know what to do with excess power generation other than sell it, but they need some help in balancing all this power. And so what they do apparently is store power on your battery and then your battery is used to feed to the power to your neighbors and back to the grid. And you get a profit for that. Now with Sesol, they give you a 16 kilowatt hour battery, which is massive, well, pretty big. The majority of that battery's capacity is used for this grid balancing thing, where basically the battery's kind of topped up and topped up and used a bit and depleted and topped up. And then another proportion of the battery is used for your personal storage as well and consumption. That percentage of the battery varies a little bit, and that's controlled by a company called CheckWatt. So I have no control over the battery's usage either way, but that would be a problem if I paid for the battery, but I've not. Sesso will give you that battery for free. And you're signing a contract for eight years for this balancing service. You get 20% of the profit, Sesso will get 80% of the profit. But the point is I've not paid anything for that battery. And so that profit is a bonus. Now, some might say, well, you could have bought the battery and then you'd get immediate profit. Well, no, because this grid balancing thing might not be forever. And I didn't want to spend a ton of money initially up front, extending my return on investment significantly, extending the time it takes before I'm actually making money on something, on a service that I don't know how long it will go on for. Now, if at some point in the future, check what decide they don't need to offer this anymore, or the Swedish government change their rules and regulations and impose additional tax on this, then I don't care, because I've not paid for the battery. Sesol can come and take it back, or they can leave it in the house and it'll be used for other purposes. But that's what I really liked about that offering. And to be honest, that was the big selling point. Now the calculation from the sales guy was that on that 20% profit that I'll make from the grid balancing, that coupled with 60% power generation of our annual consumption will equate to our energy bills being null, basically. I'm not doing this to make profit. I don't care about solar making me money. I care about solar saving me money initially. Anything else is a bonus. So we will see on that. The reality is you can't know whether it's all gonna work out until that switch is flicked on and I start seeing the stats on the app and seeing how much it's actually generating and saving us. We will see. So basically I chose Sesol, I went with their deal in the end and be completely upfront, the deal came to about 90K, 90,000 Swedish, which is about 7,000 pounds. With that, I'm getting the 16 kilowatt battery, which isn't mine, I don't own it. It's owned by Sesol, but after 10 years, they give it to you, basically. And at any point in time, you can also buy the battery if you decide you want to, take 100% of the profit of this check what thing, and each year, they knock off 10% of the price of the battery. So I can buy it at any point. I can buy myself out of that contract. I've got 13 solar panels. They are Longi, so they're a good brand, and they are 430 watts. That also includes the inverter unit as well, which is all smart and all of that. And that also includes, of course, installation. Now, my house is quite high, so apparently they needed some extra super scaffolding to get up there. Plus, Sesol got in a bit of trouble uh, earlier this year. They were told off by the Swedish Health and Safety Standards Organization because their installers weren't using proper scaffolding. So they're very strict on this now. They've been told that they will be fined millions of krona. They don't use the right kind of scaffold. So all good there, health and safety is important. I don't wanna see any solar installers falling off my roof, that's for sure. In terms of the payment approach, so it's 90,000 Swedish, which is about 7,000 pounds. You could pay that up front if you've got that money sat around somewhere. But the way I saw it, I can make more on that investment on the stock market. Uh, in two years. So I went with a two years interest-free deal that Sesol offered me. I'm paying a bit of cash up front when it's finished, and I'm also gonna 
pay, then start this two years interest free, which sounded really good because in two years, if I stick that money in a, an ISK, a Swedish investment account, I can definitely make more money on that. After I signed the deal, the sales guy who was really decent sort of handed off and not really heard a lot from him since. A few back and forth chats via SMS, but basically he hands off now to the installation and surveying team. So about two weeks after that, I got a visit from their surveyor. He came around, looked at the roof, took photos, worked out the logistics of where everything will go, showed me what will be installed. I was then told that I'll be contacted when the scaffolders are going to arrive. Now, firstly, a tip that I recommend, I think, for anybody looking to buy solar, get your drone up in the air or borrow one from a friend and film your roof. The reason I suggest this is my neighbours just had solar installed and I'm pretty sure that their installers damaged some of their expensive roof by simply trying to get the job done too quickly. So I've already shot my entire house roof in detail, high resolution, so that if Cecil damaged anything, I can evidence what it was like before they started the install. About another week and a half, maybe two weeks after the surveyor, I get a call from the scaffolders to say that they're on their way. However, the weird thing is, I was told by Cecil that the equipment will arrive first, then the scaffolding. But it's fine, it's the other way around, I'm not really too fussed. I did call Cecil to say the scaffold's coming, but I've not had anything delivered yet, because they deliver the panels and all the equipment to put in your garage prior to the scaffold arriving. But the scaffold is here, they've set it all up, they did a really good job of that. I noticed, however, that they did need to drill into the house to attach the scaffold to it. I wasn't warned about that by Cecil, and I wasn't very happy about that, to be honest. I don't want holes in my house, but I do understand that it's a safety thing. They'll fill the holes with uh, silicon, apparently, so they won't really be visible. It is what it is. It's required. Not a lot of choice, but I'd have preferred to have been told about it before they did it. Every day that that scaffold is there, it's costing Cecil a lot of money. And I'm glad that Cecil put the scaffold there way ahead of time so that the installation is not gonna be rushed in any respect. This is a big investment for me as a homeowner. The last thing I want are those panels slapped on the roof and mistakes being made. I did call Cecil after the scaffold went up to try and find out, well, when are you actually coming to install? I was a little bit annoyed because I was on hold for about 20 minutes and then the clock hit 4 p.m and the phone went dead. I then found out that their telephone hours finish at four o'clock, and instead of turning off the queue and letting people in the queue still be answered, they just turn off all the calls and turn off the phone lines, and so it went dead. Not very good, hopefully they'll improve that. But at this point, I'm waiting now for the confirmation of the equipment arriving, and then the install will start. Now, one thing I noticed the neighbors doing is booking an independent inspection after the solar build has completed. That is a great idea. Now, one thing that worries me is any kind of collaboration between these uh, inspection companies and the solar companies, but I'll make sure as best as I can that I'll get an entirely independent inspection done to make sure that everything's built properly, it's safe, it's not gonna catch fire, also that it's efficiently set up to, to generate the most energy for me. And also, of course, to make sure that I get everything fixed that's not right by Cecil quickly after the installation. Because if you have a problem two years down the line, it might be harder to resolve some of those challenges. So I'll be getting that independent inspection booked and ready for as soon as Cecil finish building here. If you're interested in seeing how this all goes, plus when I first turn it on and look at the, the app and look at the figures and the numbers coming in, then subscribe to this channel because I'm going to post another video once it's all being installed to show you how they're actually doing it. And I'll post another video afterwards as well to say whether I'm happy overall and whether I feel that I got good service from Cecil. Because if you look on YouTube, there's just nothing really about any of these big solar companies other than their own installations. When I lived in the UK, you could Google or YouTube any company and you'll get people ranting, you'll get people praising and promoting. But in Sweden, there's just no one seems to bother. So the purpose of this video really is to say how my experience with Cecil is going to go down here. And by the way, I'm in the south of Sweden. If you comment below as well with any comments about Cecil or installers that you've had or problems that you've had, or whether you just love solar and you're a bit of a solar geek. And I'll keep you updated. Thanks very much for watching.